crash. There is added commotion and strain tonight at the Port Authority bus terminal in Midtown. CBS 2's Ali Bauman is there. And Ali, how's it looking as we head into rush hour now? It's still a little early on, but Port Authority has been setting up barricades for what they expect to be some long lines of commuters trying to make it home to Hoboken and Bergen County tonight. Now, with the rail service to Hoboken still suspended, NJ Transit is expend, ex, uh, expanding their bus, rail, and light rail service to make up for it. They also have extra staff to accommodate those travelers. Now, here, Port Authority is increasing the number 126 bus service between this terminal and Hoboken, and commuters are encouraged to contact their bus carries before they get here. And the PATH train is back up and running as of 3 p.m. today and honoring NJ Transit tickets. But many people have to reroute themselves this evening to get home on time, and they're already planning for tomorrow. I walked to Port Authority from 33rd Street, which is kind of inconvenient, but I hope everyone's okay. You have to deal with certain things like this happening with mass transit, so. So tomorrow, what are you going to take in to work tomorrow? Probably the 126 to Port Authority, and then take the AC all the way downtown. Is that, how much longer is that going to take you then, what you normally um, take? Probably like 35 minutes. Now, it is still a little early for that rush hour, but many people here say this is a lot more crowded than they would typically see at about 4.30 on a Thursday afternoon. Some people said they snuck out of work early to beat the rush. Others say their employers let them out a little early to get home in a timely manner. But again, it should be expected to get real crowded in the next couple hours. We're live at the Port Authority bus terminal. Ali Bauman, CBS2 News. Okay, Ali, thank you. Let's head back out to Christine in Hoboken with a look at where this investigation may be headed next. Christine. Yeah, thank you, Maurice. Actually joining me now is a engineering expert, Professor Robert Paswell with City College. Thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. Glad to be here. In your opinion, what could be the causes of this? What are the possibilities? The possibility. First of all, the person was going too fast. Whatever, whatever happened, and you can't forget that. So, uh, if there was a signal malfunction, if uh, there was a track, something on the tracks, he was still going fast coming into the station. So the real question comes down to why was he going at that speed as he as he approached the station? The train has a tremendous amount of momentum. Uh, you're going 30 miles an hour, uh, a couple of thousand yards from the station. You should be slowing down. And I think some of the passengers said they felt they were still going fast. So I would look at at. Uh, what what was the uh, locomotive engineer thinking? Now the locomotive was in the back, but they they're able to see to the front by either TV cameras or or radio, so they know what's going on. And so that could be it. It could be a signal malfunction, perhaps uh, further down the road. Uh, it could be something in the track. But the the most likely story is is that the person should have been slowing down. I mean that's that's sort of obvious, and they weren't. And the question is why. I mean, and that's something that the National Transportation Safety Board is going to have to find out. I know you can't be exact, but can you give us a sense of the speed this train was coming in at, just judging by the pictures that you've seen today? Well, from what I've seen and from what, what's been reported in the press, they were going 20, 30, 30, 35 miles an hour. And when you're pulling the station, you should be going 10 to 15 miles an hour so you can actually stop. Remember, a train weighs a lot. It's got a tremendous amount of momentum, you know, which is the weight time is the speed, so uh, uh, you just can't stop it on a dime. So you need to slow down, and, and I think we all know when a subway train comes into a station, you feel it uh, often too sharp, but you feel the brakes coming on, and, and they it takes that's two city blocks that they're stopping in. And uh, NTSB just arrived here on the scene. Um, take us into their investigation. What do they? What, what are their priorities when they get here? Well, their priority is obviously to find out what happened. And so they look at every aspect. They look at, at the right of way. Was there something on the right of way? They look at the signals in the signal system. They look if there's something in the station. And they want to interview anybody who's concerned, especially the motorman. What, what was the motorman doing at the time? I don't know if it was a man or a woman. What was the motorman doing at the time? And what was their thought process? And then they also look, the trains have black boxes like airplanes do. They look at the conditions on the train to see what was happening and see how it uh, how it goes together with with 
what the motorman thought was happening. Positive train control. Right. These are, it, it's a technology that will stop a train if it's going over a certain speed. Yeah. But yet, we've had an issue here in our country to get these installed. In your opinion, do you feel as though that this is a necessity? Absolutely. It's, I think everyone feels it's a necessity. The railroads, the freight railroads, especially, they, they originally came out for the freight railroads and the commuter rail, like New Jersey Transit is. And the reason is, is that uh, uh, if a train is going too fast, you want uh, to take the train out of whoever is driving it too fast hands and stop it. And, and I think one of the real ironies is now you're pretty, you can buy a car now. And if it gets too close to another car, it will It'll break stop. itself. And and if they can have it quickly on cars, why don't they have it on trains? Well, will it be a lifesaver? It would absolutely be a lifesaver. Professor Paswell, thank you so much for thank your expertise. You. It was a pleasure meeting you. You too. All right. Thank you. And do stay with CBS2 here as we continue our team coverage of the deadly train crash here in Hoboken. We'll be right back.